Today's lesson is on chemistry. We're going to learn a little bit about chemistry before we move into some of the chemical reactions that occur in your cell. So you have some background information. So the first thing we're going to talk about is elements. And an element is something that cannot be broken down. It's the smallest um, thing you can have. A small, the smallest unit of an element is an atom. And the periodic table shows us all the elements on Earth. So you have a copy of the periodic table in your agenda. And so you can take a look at this and you can see some of the um, elements we've talked about, such as carbon and oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen. Um, you probably have heard of iron and helium. And uh, we've talked about phosphorus and potassium. And so you can look through the, the periodic table of elements and look at some other elements that you may have heard of. A compound is when we take two elements and we combine them together. So you know some compounds. You might not realize they're called compounds, but you know some examples of them. Um, and when we have a compound, the smallest unit of a compound is called a molecule. So some examples are water, salt, carbon dioxide. So you can have a molecule of water. And so that would be H2O. We've talked about that before. And so there's some pictures. We have salt right here. That's NaCl. And then we have carbon dioxide, and you can see the carbon atom and the two oxygen atoms together make carbon dioxide. More information on compounds. Water, we're going to talk about water because that's one we all know of. It's made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So when we write that, which most of you know, we write H2O. The two means that there's two hydrogen atoms. The O means there's one oxygen. We don't bother writing that one. It's just like when you write an X in math. If there's only one X, we don't usually write a one in front of it. So we have an invisible one right there. And when we look at the molecule, it's going to look like this. Again, here's our two hydrogen atoms and our one oxygen atom. And so if we had two water molecules, we would write it by putting a two in front of our hydrogen or our H. So that means there are two water molecules. So when you look at them, there's one, two, three, four hydrogen and there's two oxygen. So just like in math, we're going to distribute this number two. So to figure out how many atoms we have, you take the two here and you multiply it by that two, which gives us four. One, two, three, four. And then you take the two here and you multiply it by that one, which we didn't write and we have two oxygen. So we're going to need to know this when we start getting into some formulas and we have more um, numbers and more different types of compounds. In a chemical reaction, we have a lot of them occurring in our cells and we're going to be talking about a few of them like photosynthesis, which is a chemical reaction. It doesn't occur in our cells, but occurs in plant cells. And um, cellular respiration, which is really important for us. So those are two different kinds of chemical reactions. We have decomposition, which breaks things apart. And we have synthesis, like photosynthesis, which is going to put things together. And when we're putting something together, we're going to need energy. When we're breaking something apart, we're going to release that energy. So we'll talk more about that later. A chemical equation or formula is going to show you how the reaction takes place. And many of our reactions are occurring in water which makes water very important to our cell. If we didn't have enough water in our cell, we wouldn't be able to have our reactions occurring the way that they do. So I want you in your science log to explain the relationship or relationships between chemistry and life science. Think of as many different examples as you can, how they're related, and explain those relationships.